If you're trying to create naturally lit interior renders in Keyshot, then you need to be using HDRIs. A HDRI or high dynamic range image is typically a 360 degree photo made specifically for rendering in programs such as Keyshot. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to quickly get started with HDRIs and some of the other surrounding settings involved with them that we use in our workflow. Of course, if you'd like to fast track the interior modeling materials and lighting part of the process, then consider picking up one of the ready to render interiors over at Moment. We already have a diverse range of residential and commercial scenes with plenty more on the way. If you're interested, I'll leave the link to moment.co.uk down in the description below. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna use one of our latest scenes, which is this kitchen sink diorama. There's a few more props in here, but the big thing in this scene is the window outside. So we're gonna have a HDRA outside pumping in sunlight and getting a nice view outside of there. Just to point out what I'm using at the moment, so I'm using the bog standard startup.hdr that everyone starts with in Keyshot, and then we'll look at the basic settings first. So the size and height are gonna matter a lot more with what HDRIs you use. I'm currently at 10 meters on the size here, and also my ground size down here is 10 meters, although we're not gonna see the ground, so there's no, there's no issues there. Now for HDRIs, there are some built already into the Keyshot library. If you go to your library, you simply need to go to the environment tab, where you have environments and outdoors. Now with these, you can just drag and drop them directly onto your window and they will apply. Essentially that will set up a new environment in here with the HDRI loaded. I'm gonna show you today the custom way of doing it because there's not a great variety of HDRIs in the library. So we're gonna look at how to get external resources and then how to add them in. So let's look at where we can get some of those resources from. There's two websites that I would recommend. First up would be Ambient CG. I've talked about Ambient CG in videos before. It's all public domain licensing, CC0, fantastic quality, love to support them. However, with HDRIs, here at Moment, we prefer to use Polyhaven. So Polyhaven is also free, all CC0 licensed resources, so you can use them for whatever you want. And when you're on Polyhaven, just go to Assets and HDRIs. Now for us in this case, we could go Outdoor, Naturally Lit, and then go for Overcast. Overcast is gonna give you softer shadows, which we tend to prefer for product visualization over harsh sunlight, but it's really up to you. And then take your pick from any one of these. Today, I'm gonna to be using the Canon HDRI, which is a nice Bayview scene, which we've used uh, before in some of our files. Now, when you download from any of these websites, you wanna make sure you're downloading in EXR format. That's gonna be a HDR image. It's really important that you download the HDR file because things like JPEGs won't work like this. If you use a JPEG, the sun pretty much will be as bright as the clouds, which isn't how light works in, um, in the real world. So you need to use HDR files to get that difference. In terms of resolution, I would at minimum go with 8K. It might sound overkill, especially if you're doing lower resolution renders, but that's 8K around 360 degrees. Okay, that's a lot of degrees to spread that image around. So 8K actually isn't that high res when you're talking about these HDRIs. You see they go up to 16 and then 24K on this website. So over in Keyshot, I'm going to uh, go to my environment tab. So we're already in the environment tab. And then to set this, we go to the HDRI editor, click on the background layer, and we're going to be in image mode. The image here is startup.hdr. I'm going to click the, click the folder. And then straight on from there, I'm going to load in my Canon 8K that I've just downloaded from Polyhaven. Click open. It'll take a moment to update. And there you go. So in terms of positioning this HDRI, you can rotate it and in a mode we'll move it up and down too. Now in the background layer, you can scroll down and you've got tilt and rotation in here. Okay, this will just move the background layer. So if you have any other pins on top, they won't move with that. In our case, so we're not gonna use any pins on top. So I'm just gonna go back to the settings tab and then use the gray bar here. So the gray bar here is just gonna rotate this environment around and you can see I can get it so that I get that if I wanted the bay view out of the window, I can line that up there. Of course, that's changing the position of the sun or the brightest area of this overcast environment here. So it's gonna change where the lighting comes into the window. That looks pretty good. Now, the last thing um, here, we've got size and height. This is gonna depend massively on the environment that you use. Obviously in this scene, we're looking out into kind of the horizon. So how big do you make this? Do you make it so that your HDRI is miles big? In our case, no. Uh, it's just got to work right and it's got to be big enough for your scene. So this kitchen itself is only about five by five meters at the moment. So if I have a 10 meter environment, at least I know that I'm covering the whole scene. In my case, I probably would go a little bit bigger than this. I might go up to like 30 meters. 
um, on the size, but it's not going to have too much of an impact. You see, it makes it bigger here, but we'll correct the height in a mo. So it's really just making sure that it's big enough for your scene. And moving on to height, typically these HDRIs, when you go larger, they tend to bring the horizon up too high, as it does in this case. So then we just need to start correcting the height by bringing it down. Okay, so you can see now that I can set the horizon where I want. Okay, if I don't think that perspective looks right, then I can start bringing it up. Yeah, but about there looks pretty good for, for this. So I'm at minus 0 0.1, which is typically where we set most of our interiors in our assets. We don't need to worry about anything else in here. If you want to change the brightness and contrast, or if you if your scene is underexposed, that's not something that you would change here in brightness and contrast. Okay, I typically say leave these at 1-1 one, one because it's a photograph. Let's not adjust the photograph. Think about photography. If you're a photographer doing an interior photo, or if you're photographing outside, you can't control the brightness of the sun. Instead, you would adjust the exposure on your camera. So we'll get back to that in a moment. Working our way down in the tabs in Keyshot and the lighting tab for our interiors, we just bang them into interior mode. And then one thing that we do as well is increase the ray bounces and the global illumination bounces. I, it's lower diminishing returns really after about 25. So if you go 30 on both, you're going to get pretty good calculations. Um, we always have smooth global illumination turned off, especially in CPU mode if we're not rendering GPU because that can look pretty rough. Then we're over to the image tab where we can actually make these adjustments to the exposure and contrast. So in the image tab, as I've talked about before, always go with photographic mode. It's up to you whether you want to go low contrast or high contrast. That will really matter on what you have in the scene. But under tone mapping, you get to adjust these anyway. So I can really adjust the exposure, maybe up to three if I wanted to here. This image needs a little bit more contrast. And if I wanted to warm it up, I could use the white balance. I would argue though white balance is really something that you might want to consider doing in post-production in Lightroom Classic, maybe even Photoshop. But there we go. So now we have that environment pumping in that soft diffuse light on here. There are other settings that you might want to consider in the image tab, but again, a lot of these can be achieved in post. One that I will point out, which is quite nice to use, especially when you can see the outside is Bloom. So Bloom will blow out the bright areas of the image, make it actually look like they're bright and the camera's reacting to that. If you're using Bloom, my recommended is to go one and then 100, so you can really see the Bloom. Then you would increase the Bloom threshold until the only thing that's blooming is the brightest bits of your image. So for me, just that bit of the sky there. So once you've found your threshold, then you start to bring down the radius and the intensity if you want to. So I can bring down this intensity now, and I'm really just looking for that soft glow here around the window. So here's Bloom off, here's Bloom on. That's up to you whether you want to use that, but it can make your scenes feel a little bit more alive. So that's how to use a HDRI in Keyshot to light an interior scene with some other settings around that. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one.